This is AutoLine Daily, reporting on all aspects of the global automotive industry. Good news for Tesla. The Chinese government just approved subsidies for Model 3s produced in the country. Customers will receive a $3,500 subsidy for buying a Model 3, which will carry a price of about $50,000. Tesla plans to start delivering Model 3s built at its Shanghai factory in January. And the company needs to be successful in China so it can start making a sustainable profit. And staying in China for a moment, PSA's partner in the country, Dong Feng, is planning to sell part of its 12% stake in the French automaker. Reuters reports the move is to help with the PSA and FCA merger. Due to U.S. trade tensions with China, American regulators are more likely to approve the merger if Dong Feng owns a smaller share of PSA. FCA and PSA are hoping to sign an agreement to create the new company by the end of the year. You can take the interim tag off of Rory Gamble's title at the UAW. The union's board officially named him president yesterday. He will serve the remainder of former president Gary Jones's four-year term, which ends in June of 2022. Gamble is the first African-American president in the union's history, and he's enacted a number of ethics reforms since he became leader of the union in early November. But it's not known if those changes are enough for the UAW to avoid federal oversight. Seems like every day there's another automaker announcing cost-cutting measures, and today is no different. Nissan will close its U.S. operations for two days in January to help save cash. It's putting its employees on unpaid furlough for those days, and is also cutting employee travel expenses in half. The closure affects employees at its headquarters near Nashville, as well as factory workers in Tennessee and Mississippi. As we keep saying, these cost-cutting moves are just the tip of the iceberg, and we expect more to come. Toyota has a problem with its hybrids. Can't seem to make enough of them. Bloomberg reports, last month hybrids made up 13% of all of Toyota and Lexus's sales in the U.S. market. And it's even higher for specific models like the RAV4. Nearly a quarter of its sales were hybrids in November. And Toyota says it could have sold twice as many RAV4 hybrids as it did, but it can't get enough batteries. To help drive this whole point home, Toyota only has an 11-day supply of RAV4 hybrids compared to a 20-day supply of its gas models. But all of this has come at the expense of some of its other hybrids like the Prius, whose sales are down 21% so far this year. You know, when I think of iconic movie cars, my mind goes to James Bond Aston Martins or Steve McQueen's Bullet. But yesterday, the Chevrolet Suburban was the first vehicle ever awarded its own Hollywood star. While that might seem crazy, the Suburban actually has some pretty good credentials. Since its first appearance in 1952, it has been in more than 1,750 films and TV series. It has appeared in at least one TV series every year since 1956 and one film every year since 1960. And as one person puts it, When a convoy of black Suburbans appears on screen, you know that's not the time to leave your seat to buy popcorn. A year after launching its pilot program, Waymo says it has given more than 100,000 trips in its self-driving vehicles. It currently has 1,500 monthly users and has tripled the number of weekly rides it's given since January. And the service will expand and add more riders. Up till now, Waymo's app has only been available for Android users, but now iPhone owners can get access as well. We're all familiar with seatbelt warnings for front seat passengers, but the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety says it's time to include the warning for those in the rear seat. It recommends a visual warning to drivers while the vehicle is parked. When the vehicle is in motion, it says an audible and visual warning should be triggered if a rear seat passenger unbuckles their belt. At the same time, the IIHS would also like to see NHTSA extend audio warnings for unbuckled front seat passengers. Currently, a 4-8 to second audible warning is required, but the IIHS wants to increase that to 90 seconds. It's done research that shows drivers who don't always wear seatbelts 
are a third more likely to use one with a 90 second warning. If it's implemented, the IIHS says it could save nearly 1,500 lives a year. What do you think? Is this overkill or a necessary step to protect passengers? Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Back in 2009, Hyundai redesigned the Sonata with more expressive styling than it ever did before, and sales took off. But the head honchos back in Korea thought the styling was too expressive, and with the next redesign, they told designers to tone it down. They did tone it down, and sales started falling the day it came out. But Hyundai learns from its mistakes, and with the all-new 2020 Sonata, codenamed DN8, they went back to more expressive styling. The new car is lower and longer. Moreover, it has shorter overhangs, which improves the stance. Thanks to its fastback design, it has a short rear deck. They also moved the cowl further back and leaned the windshield back more. And all that automatically makes the hood look longer. Note how the cut lines on the hood go to the very leading edge of the front end, instead of terminating into a front fascia. That eliminates a horizontal cut line, which also makes the hood look longer. To make the car stand out even more, they ran chrome strips on top of the front fenders from the DLO all the way to the headlamps. The chrome strips are made from two pieces, and the leading piece is actually made from acrylic, which is laser etched with thousands of tiny holes to let light through. It actually becomes part of the daytime running lights and really stands out at night. The front end is dominated by a big grille, which is so much the rage these days, while the rear end is attractively finished with a bit of a combat tail to it. Note how the tail lights end with sharp edges to provide a good cutoff point for the airflow, and those bumps on top of the tail lights generate vortexes to help air separate from the car. Details like these help get the coefficient of drag down to 0.27 which is quite respectable for a mass market sedan. Hyundai says that going forward, it will no longer design its vehicles so they all have a family resemblance. Instead, it says it's going for a Hyundai look where every vehicle has an individual design, but you'll still know they're all Hyundais. It says it's kind of like chess pieces. There are many different types, but you know they're all chess pieces. And with that, we wrap up this week's reports. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.